So another concern that we know a lot of people are having that affects their mental health and well-being is around the rising costs of living, particularly oh, yeah. housing. Hmm. There was a report that came out last year in Australia, actually, where they found that 59% of people attribute their mental health challenges to the increasing cost of living. So that's huge. 60% of people, basically, saying that it's because everything costs more that I'm struggling with my mental health. Um, 45% say it's housing specifically. Uh, so they what, reckon the cost of housing has increased. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what advice can we give someone facing mental health challenges that are related to finances, to the cost of living, not, not being able to make ends meet and uh, having more, what do they say, having more week at the end of your paycheck than paycheck yeah. at the end of your week? Well... There is no one single answer because what's causing people distress around finances, and I'm going to call it distress, mm. not just mental health issues, yeah. because the first thing to experience is distress. That's right. Not mental health issues. Yeah. Um, so, you know, is it is it not having enough money to make and meet at the, at the end of the month? Or that could be for a family, mm -hmm. for as a family, that could be an issue. Um, like we have seen in most places in the world, the attendance to soup kitchens has increased yep. exponentially yep. all around the world. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously people are not having enough to eat sometimes yeah. and they're relying on, on soup kitchens to do that. Um, and that's concerning. Mm. Of course, your mental health doesn't have to go simply because you don't have enough to eat or to pay the bills. That does not. It's a, in a, in a, it doesn't that's go a, one there's, interesting distinction there's a correlation it, yeah. but there's not a causation yeah. necessarily yeah. so some people can be poor and quite happy mm. <laughs> so nothing wrong with their mental health but we can't say that that is the ideal result mm. from not having mm. enough mm. we do know that some people you know with men the status and how they feel about themselves is very much connected yes. to their ability to provide for their family yep so yeah. if they can't provide, we know that naturally, biologically, they're going to be suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more likely that they suffer than not. Yeah. Obviously, if, if, you, if you have a, f a father in the family that has got a large family or a family to provide for, his distress is going to be greater than if it's a single young man that only has to provide for himself. You know, providing mm -hmm. for one person it's a lot easier than providing for three or four or five. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it all depends. Depends also on what's available in the community mm. um, to help these people. Mm. But it can be a punch in the guts for a, for a family yeah. to say, oh my God, we have, we're now at this stage where we have to depend on the charity of others, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. And then you mentioned like having the resources out yeah. there to assist people because I know a lot of the companies and organizations that I work with are charitable, uh, not-for-profits, and they're really struggling even just with keeping staff. Mm. And the staff that they have are under pressure to provide more services, more support, and so then they burn out and they can't keep going, and then there's less services for the community, and it becomes this cycle um, that's just not working. Yeah, that's um, true. I mean, it's yeah. very easy to say, I like... I remember a story from the Great gone. Depression that I heard Hmm. Um, I can't remember exactly who told me the story, but he said that during, oh, this is obviously many years ago, I heard this story, that um, uh, during the Great Depression in Australia, there were men coming around and they were hungry. Hmm. And um, so his father would ask them to move uh, lots of logs from one place to the other. And he says that, that those logs got moved so much during the Great Depression. Backwards and forwards Backwards from one place forward. to the other. Yeah, because he didn't want to feed them with, and then felt that they had, they had received charity. Right. So yeah. everybody that ate, they ate plentiful yeah. at the end of the day, hmm. but they felt that they had earned the meal. That's and that was, that very, was very smart of yeah. that man, you know. Uh, every man that ate in that house felt proud of themselves and felt good about themselves. Mm. So charity is good, um, but also helping people mm. feel good about themselves mm. is also important. And we have to be clever yeah. 
as yeah. to how that charity is given. Well, I like the idea that pay it forward kind of thing. Yes. So if I take here, but I can give over there, that, that can also help people yeah. feel a sense of um, self-pride, really. Yeah. We all need help. Everyone needs help in one way or another at some point in time, you know. So but the biggest thing we need is to feel valuable. Yeah. Contribution. Contribution. Yeah. So are there ways in which we can help other people in which yeah. they feel valuable? Yeah. And I mean, we're looking at different parts of that Maslow's hierarchy of needs. For those of yeah. you who are familiar with it, you know, the, according to Maslow, you need those basic survival, food, water, shelter, um, you know, and before you go up to the next level, before you go up to the next level. But it was, I mean, at the time it was considered that it was progressive, but I, I think there's a mix. I really think that we, we do need that sense of belonging, even if we don't have the yeah. basics sometimes and so that can be protective as well yeah um, so we can make changes feel valuable but no, let's not forget about making our family members mm. feel valuable too mm. if your husband has lost a job how can you make him feel valuable because mm. he will be feeling pretty shit mm -hmm. at the moment okay so, <laughs> so we've been talking i've got to say or it if, yeah. as the female yeah, here yeah. we've been talking about men as a provider etc etc yeah. but the reality is there are a lot of single parent families there are a lot and of the, that burden is mm. on a lot of females as well to mm. provide or the burden but also the desire as well yeah. so um if you're in a single family it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to expect others to make you feel valuable because it wouldn't be fair if you're a single mother or a single dad to expect your children no of to, course yeah to make you you're the feel parent valuable. you're the parent at you're the end the of the day so but it is your job to make yeah. your kids feel valuable yeah i mean that's that's where you can give it uh, but do you have a, you have friends and family around you that can speak to you positively that can speak mm. to you mm. in they can mm. they can somehow meet your love language mm. Mm. Do you think the stress of finances impacts men and women differently? You've talked about men it, it, and the yeah. importance of providing. Do women not have, is, is it, I feel like there's a qualitative difference to the yeah, way we experience is, that think, stress. What do you see that? Well, <coughs> what we know from the way there, I mean, there are differences. First and foremost, we know biologically there are differences between men and women. Even the way the brain is structured is different. Um, and all the studies consistently show women uh, have a greater tendency to ruminate, for example, to go over and over and over things, which can lead to more stress, more anxiety, more depression. Um, interestingly, a lot of the statistics show sort of higher rates of anxiety um, and depression amongst men, uh, amongst women, sorry, rather than men. And yet we know that men struggle too. So there's a lot, you know, is that just because of the way the questions are asked? Is that because women are more likely to talk about it? Um, and, and yet I think there's there's a different level of... Yeah, I don't think how, uh, regardless of how far we have come in the last 30, you know, well, 50 years of feminism, uh, I think it's biological for a man still to feel that they have the main, the main responsibility to provide for the family. It's, it's like something ingrained, evolutionary ingrained. So when the they hunter. lose their job, it's, it's a yeah. big, it's not just a big rejection, it can be a big um, punch to their psychology as to how much they're worth as a man, as a man in, in society mm -hmm. and for their family. Um, whereas, you know, it, it, it is different it, I don't think women still have got that put up on them on them as a society mm. in which they're seen as the providers for the family. So, it, uh, some women may. I mean, but you can't say, oh, not. women are fine if we lose our job. No, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't <laughs> I know, say I that. Know. I'm saying that that aspect of being the provider there is, is not on top. There is still I a societal expectation, a, uh, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there's still an aspect of rejection for women and status, because mm. mm. I've seen more in the last 50 years, I've seen more women become more concerned about their career. Yeah. And if their career is failing, they're not going to be happy. Of course not. They're not going to be happy. No. So when you ask, is, is it impact differently? Yes, it impacts differently, but mm. it still impacts. Of course. We're not saying that Absolutely. it doesn't impact. Yeah. It impacts differently, but it still impacts. Mm. So that's what, we, what we're trying to deal with. Now, you, know, you raise an interesting point. What if they're single parent families? Mm. Um, 
what if they're single parent yeah. families and trying to make well, it meet. You the know, there's a lot of homeless single parent families at the moment, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, the, then again, we come back to forming community. Uh, relationships, support, support networks. I mean, they, what's the saying? It takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. And, um, but if you're homeless, are you part of a community? That's a good question. Yeah. Or do you feel disenfranchised? Mm -hmm. If you're in a car moving around, for example. Yeah. Um, and I can imagine some people would prefer not to be part of, you know, the community. Maybe you know. too embarrassed, too exactly. ashamed. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So difficult questions, especially um, speaking of people losing jobs, there's been uh, lots of reports lately, layoffs in the tech industry, not one that you'd typically think of as being in the space of poverty. Nevertheless, to go from having a, a good solid income to, to not having that security anymore, um, that seems to be continuing. So some industries are laying off people, other industries are desperate to get people. Yeah, there's a lot happening people. in the... Yeah. IR space at the moment. And we talk about the housing crisis and the job crisis, but uh, the, the rise of, of living cost. You know, the, the reality that it seems like the governments have dropped the ball in building houses and providing houses for, mm. you know, for, for the more desperate. Yes. Uh, so we don't have as much available in that. Mm. So we're not saying here that it's all up to you. <laughs> There's yeah. so much we can do as individuals yeah. sometimes. We can take care of our mental health so we don't go down the rabbit hole too far. Yeah. You know, but some things are systemic uh, and mm. we need better systems. Mm. We need better provisions mm. for those of us that through no fault of our own, sometimes we find ourselves in a situation uh, that is dire. You know? yeah. And as a community, we need to come together and say, okay, what yeah. are we providing? And get, get resourceful, really. Yes. Think about things in a different way. How can we approach this differently? Because the world is changing. So yeah, absolutely. we need to be adaptable and flexible and yeah, be in that. And again, big parts of resilience is that ability to, to be resourceful and flexible with whatever we're presented with so we can keep ourselves as well as possible through change. Yeah. And yeah. remember also that it's nice to have nice things but things don't miss you if you're gone. Mm -hmm. They don't have a feeling for you, mm. even if you have a feeling for them. Yeah. But relationships is where it's at. If you have strong relationships, if you're known as a person that is kind, that is loving, mm. that is stable, <laughs> stable, you know, and true to your word, you can develop nice, strong friendships. And you know, sometimes the best thing that you can have around you in, this, in a crisis is a good network. Yeah. A good network. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week, so when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues, and your loved ones.